the first question says that consider the equality summation i cube i going from 0 to n equal to x and the following choices for x and you are the you are given the four choices as theta of n raised to power 4 theta of n raised to power 5 big o of n raised to power 5 and omega of n n cube or n raised to power 3 the equality above remains correct if x is replaced by all right so first you need to know that what is exactly the summation of the cubes of n natural numbers or first n natural numbers this is what is specified to you okay so you must remember that the sum of first n the sum of the cubes of first n natural numbers is equal to n multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2 whole square all right so this would come out to be theta of n raised to power 4 because this is n square this would be n square n square multiplied by n square would give you a bound of theta of n raised to power 4 all right so if this is equal to some value x then what can be the values that can be present in place of x first of all first option would definitely be present because this is the exact bound or the tightest bound that we can have on this inequality or this expression whose uh, up, whose bound is theta of n raised to power 4 so first option is definitely it can be a, a choice for replacing x okay now coming to the second option second option says theta of n raised to power 5 now this option is not correct why because theta bound means that it is a tight bound however we are specifying here that this expression evaluates to a tight bound of n raised to power 4 therefore we can say that n raised to power 5 upper bounds this expression or this uh, value but it we cannot say that it is a tight bound or it is a theta bound okay because theta bound means that the uh, the value this expression would lie between a lower bound of n raised to power 5 and below the lower bound of n raised to power 5 okay it would lie between the two so if we are saying theta it refers to something like this see if this is our expression of i cube then n raised to power 5 theta of n raised to power 5 would be bounding this expression from below as well as from above something like this this is not this may not be a very clear cut or correct representation but i am representing it so that you get an idea that theta of n raised to power 5 is not the correct replacement for x now can we replace x with the third option big o of n raised to power 5 yes we can definitely replace it because n raised to power 4 forms or it will be upper bounded by n raised to power 5 and thus big o is an upper bound on n raised to power 4 or this particular expression so this is correct this is correct this is not correct now let's come to the fourth option omega of n raised to power 3 now what does omega mean omega means a lower bound so can we say that n raised to power 4 is lower bounded by n raised to power 3 definitely okay so this option is also correct and correspondingly which out of a b c d would be correct only one only two these cannot be correct one or three or four but not two okay so the c option is correct so in this type of questions you need to very uh, well know what is exactly meant by an upper bound or a big o uh, bound or a theta bound or a omega bound okay so you not only have to calculate such bounds in different questions some questions ask you actually what is the basics or uh, the criteria of various bounds just like in this question okay so you need to know the concept very clearly then only you'll be able to solve these questions coming to the second question the question asks 
which one of the following is the recurrence equation for the worst case time complexity of quick sort algorithm for sorting n numbers where n is greater than or equal to 2 in the recurrence equation given below c is a constant so worst case of quick sort occurs when the current problem is reduced by one uh, or a single element or we can say that the worst case occurs when the recursive call that is made has the sub problem of size that is one less than the size of the current problem all right so if the current problem is of size say n has size n and we have to make a recursive call of size n minus 1 such is the problem given to us then we say that that in every case if we have to make calls which are of size 1 less than the previous problem size then the worst case occurs and for quick sort worst case occurs when the array initial array or problem that is given to us is either is sorted in either ascending or descending order because every time if you choose the corner element you will always be getting the either the highest element or the lowest element so Quick sort has a worst case which would have a recurrence of the form Tn equal to T of n minus 1 because we are reducing the initial problem into two parts a problem of size n minus 1 and a problem of size 1 plus a constant amount of time that is required constant into n amount of time I would say that is required to solve the entire problem or these problems okay so uh, this is the time to solve the problem of size n minus 1 this is the time to solve the problem of a single element and this is the combining time or the remaining time that would be required to combine the solutions and then result and then provide the result for the entire problem all right so this is the correct answer for this question and this answer is present in option b all right so that is how you will solve both these questions i have provided the answers to you if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section below and the question says that assume that a merge sort algorithm in the worst case takes 30 second for an input of size 64 which of the following most closely approximates the maximum input size of a problem that can be solved in six minutes all right so one thing you should be very clear is that there are some common algorithms like merge sort quick sort bubble sort or searching techniques that whose running time you should be uh, no you should be very well aware of or you should know the time complexity of such common algorithms on your tips okay so reading merge sort you should be reminded that the running time or the time complexity of merge sort is theta of n log n okay that means the worst case or in any case merge sort takes theta of n log n time all right so if we are given that in the first case when the input is 64 okay see the worst case takes 30 second for an input of 64 so n is 64 and the time that it takes is 30 seconds all right so what would we do since theta of n log n cannot be directly equated to time that is 30 second we would use a constant the constant we are taking here is c so c multiplied by n log n is equal to the time which is equal to 30 second and if we put the values c multiplied by n n is 64 log of 64 this is base 2 all right so 64 is equal to 30 now if we solve this we would get c 
into 64 log 64 base 2 is 6 because 2 raised to power 6 is 64 equal to 30 and from here we would get the value of c as 30 divided by 6 into 64 which is equal to 5 by 64 all right now what do we have to tell in this question we are asked to closely approximate the maximum input size of a problem that can be solved in six minutes now we have the constant c now we have to tell or find the value of n okay so c is 5 by 64 we know that the running time would be log n log m and we have to equate it with the time time is six minutes since here we considered seconds and we are using the same value of constant so we need to convert this six minutes into seconds so six multiplied by 60 would give us the corresponding seconds now if i put the values here okay so 5 by 64 into n log n would give you 360 then this would come out to be i have to find n log n equal to 360 multiplied by 64 divided by 5 so this would be 5 into 72 into 64 now see carefully that n is being multiplied by log n so can we write either 72 or 64 as a term log n definitely we can uh, means uh, i mean to say that here if we can write this entire expression 72 into 64 in a in a way so that it can be represented in this form n log n then our value of n would be very clear so 72 into 64 can also be written equivalently as 512 into 9 okay so if you calculate the value of multiplication for both these would be same but here since log of n is 9 and n is 52 and we have represented this value 72 into 64 as 512 multiplied by 9 therefore this clearly represents that n the value would be 512 for n the value would be 512 okay so i'll again explain what i mean to say here we obtained an expression for the running time and we got the value as n log n equal to 360 into 64 divided by 5 i cancelled the values by uh, 5 divided 360 divided by 5 was 72 so the expression that i obtained was n log n is equal to 72 into 64 now we would be getting the value of n very easily if we can write this product as of in a form that is of the type n into log of n okay since i can write this 72 into 64 as 512 into 9 where n is 512 and log of 512 gives me 9 therefore the answer to this question is n equal to 512 so b is the correct option okay so in the these type of question you need to see that if you are having left hand side and right hand side in different forms then you need to convert either of them in a form so that you you can equate them to each other easily and obtain the answer okay now coming to the second question the second question says let fn be equal to n and there is another function gn which is equal to n raised to the power 1 plus sine of n okay so this is n raised to the power 1 plus sine n where n is a positive integer which of the following statements is or are correct and you are given the two statements statement 1 is fn equal to big O of gn that means fn is upper bounded by gn and the second statement is fn is uh, lower bounded by gn okay so 
in these options you have to find out which out of these two statements are true all right now let's analyze the function gn gn has been specified to you as 1 plus sine of n since sine n or sine x is a function whose value varies between minus 1 to 0 and then to 1 therefore if i put different values of sine n and see how gn actually behaves then i'll find out that if sine n is equal to minus 1 then gn would become nothing but n raised to power 1 minus 1 which is 0 and it gives n raised to power 0 equal to 1. If sin n sin of n is equal to 0 then what do I get? g of n is equal to n raised to power 1 plus 0 which is n and if I write sin of n is equal to 1 then I get g of n is equal to n 1 plus 1 n raised to power 1 plus 1 which is n square all right so these are different values or these are different ways in which we can write g n corresponding to different values of sin n all right now if you carefully notice that if statement 1 has to be true then in every case g n has to upper bound f n that means the function fn has to be upper bounded by gn in every case no matter how gn behaves or what is the value of sin n okay so in this case if gn is equal to 1 and fn is equal to n there is no way in which gn can upper bound fn or I can write fn equal to big O of gn because gn is a constant and fn would have a higher running time than gn when gn is equal to 1 in the case when sin n is equal to minus 1. Therefore, in this case, statement 1 becomes false because gn is not upper bounding fn or fn is not upper bounded by gn all right now coming to the second statement second statement says that gn lower bounds fn that means the running time or the time complexity of gn should always be less than fn all right but in the case when sin n is equal to 1 and gn becomes n square this statement also becomes false because n square definitely does not bound or bind this fn equal to n at a lower level or we can say that this statement is false because when gn is equal to n square it will upper bound fn and not lower bound fn okay so both these statements are false under different scenarios and thus the answer is neither 1 nor 2 is correct so d option is the correct answer in this case all right so that's all for today's lecture thank you for watching this video please like this video if you understood these questions and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel of easy engineering classes for more such lectures in our preparation series press the bell icon to get the notifications of the videos that we upload in future so that you do not miss any video Stay tuned to our channel. Good luck for your exam.